Really quick question for you. When you did your rescue diver program and you were retrieving an unconscious diver at the bottom, did your instructor play that role of the unconscious diver or did your instructor have a dive master or another instructor play or was it a fellow student who played that unconscious role? Another question, if you're a public safety diver, did your instructor have a vinyl mannequin that he went down and said, hey, this is what you got to retrieve today. Maybe you're going to bring it up in a rescue scenario or you're going to retrieve it in a body bag. Or did he make it more realistic for you? What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now I've got a really special guest star in today's video and I want to introduce you really quick. This is our training mannequin that we use not just for the public safety diver and the rescue team diver program. We also use the same training mannequin for our rescue diver program on certain occasions as well. And we use the same mannequin as well for our sonar training programs. We teach people how to use sonars on a boat. But I wanna talk about in this video is how we can dress up this mannequin to make it more realistic. Because I think a lot of times in diving in general, it doesn't matter what class it is, We've kind of took diving and we've made it a little too simple for our students. We give them the basics, which by all means we should be doing that, but we make it a little bit too easy on them to where it's not so realistic just so that they can get those basics. But once they do, shouldn't we be up in the game a little bit and making these training scenarios that we put them through just a little bit more realistic? I mean, that's pretty much what we do when we transition them, say, from the confined water sessions over to the open water in sessions well i'm going to show you what i do for all of my public safety and rescue team diver students and i've actually started doing this to my rescue diver students as well when it comes to training mannequins versus say a real person who's just pretending to be a deceased victim all right guys let me introduce you to our training mannequin really quick uh first of all what is a training mannequin this is nothing more than just a human shaped piece of vinyl um, it's got a seam here in the middle. It goes all the way down and, I, and the seam is just closed off with Velcro But I can open the seam up. I can add weights and I've actually got about 20 pounds worth of weight in this mannequin right now So each extremity has about five pounds of weight in it to make it a little bit more Realistic and I've even dressed it up. I've got say a dive skin on I've also got a pair of swimming trunks here on this mannequin and we try to make it as realistic as possible when we do say uh public safety diving, rescue team diving, sonar training, or even rescue diver training, we want to make it as realistic as possible for our students just so that they can get a better quality training. Well, and if you're interested in getting one of these, by the way, check out Dive Rescue International. This is where this mannequin come from. I've actually used several of their mannequins over the years. They have a full body human uh, or an adult human. They've also got a child uh, shaped or a child size mannequin, and they really work great for training. There are some flaws though, and one of the flaws is it's a flat piece of material um, yes you can add weight to it or you could stuff something in it however it's not quite as realistic as what a real victim would be now I'm not discrediting it I think it's a great training aid However, it's not as realistic as what it could be. And hence, that is another reason that we dress these mannequins up to make it more realistic. You're probably rarely going to find a victim on the bottom of the water that is naked and flat with no other human characteristics, meaning uh, they're always going to have ma mass, muscle mass to them. They're going to have a skeleton inside of them, of, you know, all those other things. And they're going to have certain buoyancy characteristics. We all know that when a victim goes down, of course, over time, putrefaction can happen, gases can expand, they can change their buoyancy characteristics, or based off what garments they're wearing, their buoyancy characteristics can be changed as well. And so by adding this, we are making training scenarios and training operations more realistic to what it's going to be like in the real world. And it is going to give struggles to the students as well. They're going to swim by, they're going to try to not only preserve the body and do a um, say an investigation and document what they got, but they're also going to make documentation of clothing and stuff like that. So it's another great thing, not only to make it more realistic, you're giving your students a little bit better quality training by simply dressing it up. But now let's talk about the whole sonar operations because we use these mannequins for sonar operations weekly with our students. 
since it's a flat vinyl, so if I didn't have the weights in here, and I'm kind of show you here, it's just flat vinyl. There's nothing to it. Okay. Now, when I do add the weights to it, that's going to make the uh, hands and the feet extremely heavy. I can even add weights in the head if I want to make it a little more realistic. But as that body is descending down, or in this case, the mannequin is descending down, it's more than likely going to be fairly flat on the bottom. And without anything to increase the density or the mass of this mannequin, there's a good chance, especially out in our lake, for silt and things to actually cover up, especially if you're in a, a moving body of water, it's going to cover up. Now, if we have a soft bottom covering our mannequin, we're not going to get a good solid return when we're operating our sonar. And if you're not familiar with how sonar works, I'll give you a really quick rundown. It sings out a signal, that signal hits on something, that signal comes back, and the difference in that signal is called the Doppler tone. And basically, if it's a hard object, you're gonna get a much brighter return. If it's a soft object, you're gonna get a much duller or darker return on your sonar screen. So by creating a, a mannequin that's more realistic, you're going to get much better returns, which makes the training a lot better in the future as well. So we dress it up to make it more realistic, to add some buoyancy characteristics to it, and to get those better returns. But we also use these the same mannequin for the standard rescue diver course as well. And let me explain really quick why it is we do that. So if you've took the rescue diver program, there's a pretty good chance that your instructor probably played the role at some point of a deceased diver or a, an unconscious diver at the bottom. Or he may have had another instructor or even a dive master playing that role to give you as realistic training as possible. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I actually do with a lot of my students. Although here recently, I've actually started using the same training mannequin that we use for public safety in the rescue diver program and if you'll bear with me for a second i'll try to explain why that is the case whenever we use real people you would think that that is a real world scenario because they're real human they're living tissue they're the right body mass the right weight however they're just pretending to be deceased and this is where the problem with training with real humans come into play. You see, when I'm playing the role of the victim, and I'm also the instructor teaching the course, there's a lot of times when I'm not truly playing dead. I'll have to raise my head up to observe what the students are doing and to evaluate them to make sure they're doing it properly. I can even talk to them, and a real victim is not going to talk to you. The other problem with this is, is the individual buoyancy characteristics of all humans are different. Some float, some are positive, some sink, some are negative, and it doesn't really um, hold true to say all wetsuits will keep you floating. You see, in a five mil wetsuit in fresh water, I sink like a ton of rocks. I actually don't have to wear any weights until I get up to say a seven mil or even put on a dry suit. So when I'm teaching my students how to get me out of my gear if I was the unconscious diver, I explain to them one of the last things you want to do is undo say my waist strap. You want to leave that BCD underneath me so that I float at the surface. But now some of my assistants that teach with us, some of our other instructors and dive masters, they float no matter what. So the students can actually pull the BC out and make their life a whole lot easier by that student floating. However, not everybody is the same. So if I'm the victim, I sink. If one of my assistants are the victim, they float. With the mannequin though, it's an inanimate object. For all intents and purposes, it's dead. They're not going to be able to talk. They're not going to be able to assist that student by kicking a little bit or moving. And they're not going to be tempted to do that as we all are. Guys, as an instructor, I'm tempted all the time. If I see my student struggle, yes, I'll kick a little bit with them or I'll raise my arm to help them get me out of this BC. And there lies the problem. It's that temptation that we go through to help the students versus letting the students work in that real world or real world scenario. The mannequin can actually do that. So this is where the training mannequin can really come in and be beneficial even in the rescue diver program because there's going to be no temptation for the mannequin to actually help the students out and I think they're going to get a lot better quality training as well. So just as a quick recap, whether you're doing the rescue diver program, you're doing a public safety diver program, a rescue team diver program, or even just a boat operation sonar program, if you use the vinyl mannequins here, 
Dress them up. Make them more realistic. Add the weights to them. Put clothing on them. You know, make it as realistic as possible as you can for your students. It's going to give them a better quality training. It's going to make it more realistic because I'm going to be honest, guys. I've retrieved over 100 bodies in my career, and I've never seen one that was yellow and flat like this vinyl mannequin. And I can promise you, if you make training as realistic as possible your students will turn out to be much better divers. does not matter if it's just a rescue diver program or if it's a full-on public safety or, say, rescue team diver or even, say, an underwater criminal investigator program. It's going to be much better for them in the long run if you dress the mannequins out and make it more realistic. There you go, guys. That's my little spiel on how you can make training more realistic and uh make it better quality as well for your students. Doesn't matter if it's a rescue diver program, a public safety diver program, or any program where you've got to have some type of victim, dress your mannequins out, make it more realistic. And, you know, even if you're using humans in general, like in the rescue program, we always just use ourselves as the unconscious diver. Sometimes we are still tempted to move around <clears throat> and do things that we probably shouldn't do to assist our students or even to assist our fellow divers who's training with us. By using the mannequins and dressing them up and adding weight to them and things like that, then you can simply give your students a better quality training and it's going to be safer for you and the students because you're not constantly going up and down, up and down, up and down when you have multiple students as well. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a big thumbs up if you did. Drop me a comment down below if you use a training mannequin. How do you make it more realistic for your students? So if you're a rescue instructor, if you're a public safety instructor, how do you dress yours up to make it slightly more reali realistic to give your students the best quality training? Guys, I do want you to stay tuned. You will be seeing this training mannequin in action in an upcoming video. We have actually been blessed enough to partner with Dan, the Divers Alert Network. They are coming here to our facility. They are doing a cardiac study or a heart study on public safety divers, and they've actually requested that our public safety dive team start that study and kind of spearhead it for them so what we're going to be doing is they're going to come here they're going to hook us up to monitors they're going to be doing all different types of tests on us then we're going to run outside we're going to do some rapid deployment scenarios where we're jumping in it's within the golden hour so we're going to have to bring this victim up and get them back on land and then of course we're going to strip out of our gear come back in here get hooked back up to the monitors and hopefully they will get a better understanding on a cardiac level what's actually happening to the body of a public safety diver so stay tuned we're definitely going to be uh, filming this for you and hope you guys enjoy that as well but guys if you like the video give me a big thumbs up definitely share it once again if you got any questions drop me a comment down below i'll try to answer it the best i can as quickly as i can as well that's going to do it for today take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video